Which camera should I buy? This is the most asked question I receive. On YouTube there are millions of reviews about the latest and greatest cameras. Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Blackmagic, Red, Ari, the list goes on. Many of these cameras cost thousands of euros and every year new and better models are launched. I feel like a lot of new filmmakers out there get too caught up in the tech stuff and they get lost in the specs of their cameras. I mean, I did too. Back then I had this imagination of the perfect camera and if I could only afford it, I would finally be able to make great movies. Especially in the beginning, there is the assumption that the more expensive your camera is, the better your films are going to be. But I can tell you from experience that this isn't true at all. <laughs> See, I've been shooting on a Sony a6500 for the last three years of my filmmaking career and I'm still shooting on it today. Actually, I'm shooting on it right now. With this camera, I got to work for huge clients where the budget was five times as high as the price of the camera itself. I built up a freelance business, worked for a famous racing driver and traveled around the world to create videos. I'm not telling you this to brag or to show off, but to show you that everything you imagine is possible even with a small and a cheap camera. Over the course of the last years, camera equipment got so much better and also so much more affordable. Nowadays, you can get absolutely amazing quality for a fraction of the price that you would have paid 20 years ago. I mean, today, even some high-budget cinema movies are shot on an iPhone, while back then you had to use huge cameras, which probably cost something like 50,000 euros or even more. The point is that it got so much cheaper and so much easier to achieve an amazing quality in filmmaking. And the good message is that it's only going to increase in the upcoming years. The funny thing is that the quality doesn't even mostly depend on the camera itself, but on how you make use of it. A camera is only a tool to create something, but in the end it is you who has to make the most out of this tool. It's the same as a cook can have the best kitchen in the world, but in the end if he doesn't know how to cook, his food is still going to taste like shit. So shoot as much as you can and get to know your camera in and out. You have to know every single detail about it, like what are the best settings for this specific shot, which lens should I pick to get the look I want and so on. You really have to master your tool in order to become a better filmmaker. It's funny, but someone who knows his small 500 euro camera in and out will get way better footage than somebody who has an expensive red camera but doesn't really know how to use it to its full potential. So use the camera you already have and practice with it as much as you can. If you want to know how to get better at basically anything, including filmmaking, you can check out my video about making more mistakes right here. As good cameras became more affordable, obviously a lot more people had access to these tools and there's a lot more competition in the filmmaking world nowadays. While a few years ago people were already amazed only by the look of a video and some crazy camera movements, nowadays there's so much attention everybody's asking for, so you have to really set yourself apart by some creative storytelling, lighting or editing. When I started out with filmmaking, I always just put my focus on the camera and the quality of my shots. I would always just pick my a6500, throw it on a gimbal and go shoot with some friends without anything in mind. I didn't have a story in mind, I didn't know which emotions I wanted to capture, I just tried different angles to see what looks good and I would always just tell the people I'm filming with with something like, yeah, just do whatever you like, maybe turn around, maybe walk here and there, and yeah, just do stuff like that. So I always just put my number one priority on the look of my videos, because I thought that this was what filmmaking is all about, and I wanted to prove to other people that I'm a good filmmaker. But after some time I realized that nobody really gave a shit about my videos. <laughs> I mean they looked good, but that was about it. They didn't really tell a story, they didn't transport any emotion, nobody was moved or inspired by my videos. To become a really good filmmaker you have to shift your focus from your camera to what's happening in front of your camera. Do you have a compelling and interesting story? Is this the perfect lighting for your scene? Is this the right location for your story? Is there a better angle to transport what you want to tell? Do the models and actors show the specific emotion you want to capture or do you have to give them a new direction? These are all very, very important questions you have to ask yourself if you want to become good at filmmaking and if you want to separate yourself from the crowd. I mean, if you go to the cinema and watch a movie, what is it that really draws you into the movie? Do you really care if it's shot in eight K or that they use the most expensive stabilizer system to get that one single shot. Obviously not. This movie would be just as good if it was in full HD and if it was shot handheld. 
I like to compare cameras with money. I guess everybody knows the saying, money can't buy happiness. And the same goes for cameras. An expensive camera doesn't make you a better filmmaker. You can't just buy skills. That's not how it works, unfortunately. <laughs> There are already many videos on YouTube where people say gear doesn't matter and it's always the people who already own a lot of expensive gear. It's the people who already possess all of these things like an expensive red camera or lighting equipment who actually realize that this equipment doesn't set their videos apart. And again, it's the same with money. It's always the rich people who say money can't buy happiness because they already know what it's like to have a lot of money and they know that it doesn't really change a thing. In fact, having a lot of money also always comes with responsibilities and a lot of stress. And so does expensive gear. You have to take care of many more settings, which makes the whole filmmaking process a lot more complicated and shifts your focus again on the camera and not towards what's happening in front of your camera. Sometimes shooting with a smaller camera actually gives you some advantages because you can try riskier shots that you wouldn't try with an expensive camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can be very spontaneous and get authentic footage because your camera is just easily set up and sometimes you can also just achieve some very unique angles where bigger cameras wouldn't fit. So don't get demotivated because you don't own the equipment you think you need, but instead show everybody else that it can also be done with less. For myself, my camera actually turned out to be an incredible motivation because I just thought to myself, I'm going to prove to everybody else that I can make videos that are just as good as the ones of big film production companies. Trust me, the potential of the camera you already have right now is so much higher than you think. So try to max out that potential before you upgrade to a new one. I feel like our culture is always just pushing the material side of filmmaking. We have all of these crazy camera robots, we have crazy stabilizers and all sorts of shit, but nobody really talks about the depth and the thoughts and the intelligence that goes into all of these movies. So this is why I wanted to talk about it today and to show you that you can realize any idea you imagine with the camera you already have. No matter if it's a cinema camera, if it's a small DSLR or or even if it's just your phone. So overall, there's no real answer to the question of what is the best camera to buy. Sorry. <laughs> but to be honest, there are so many different good camera models out there and almost all of them do the job for the thing you want to do. So don't think about it for too long. Don't wait for any new product releases because that's just going to hold you back. But instead, just pick a camera you can afford and just start creating. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like. This helps the YouTube algorithm to show my videos to a larger audience. Also, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this topic are and maybe also what camera you shoot on right now. Feel free to check out some of the other videos on my channel or subscribe and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos. I wish all of you guys good luck creating videos and I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.